think I've accidentally built my perfect server. What you're seeing here is a concoction of parts that I've acquired to actually just sell on. Because I absolutely love technology, I tend to scour Facebook Marketplace for deals, I tend to then purchase these things, whatever they are, anything related to technology, and then I have a little play with them for a couple of weeks and then I sell them on and make a little bit of a profit. And it's become quite fun because you learn a skill of negotiation and so on. So if you wanna see a video about all of my kind of Facebook escapades, then let me know in the comments down below. But what we've got here is a bit of a mix of new and used components, but the kind of the core of all of this is very much used. So I was looking through Facebook Marketplace and I came across a CPU and I was like, Ooh, that is relatively cheap and it's this Intel Core i5-12600. So it's the 12th Gen 1, they're not affected by the kind of cracking of the 13th and 14th Gen 1s and it has enough horsepower with 6 cores and 12 threads without kind of going crazy when it comes to TDP. I think it's a 65 watt TDP. It's obviously the non-K which means it's not overclockable but it has an internal GPU which means it has quick sync for anyone that wants to use Plex or Jellyfin for transcoding of media. But then I was like, do you know what, that CPU will only net me about a 10 or 20 pound profit. So I thought, why not stick it in a motherboard and sell it on as a bit of a package, as a bit of a starter kit? Because I had this case here, which is a Corsair case. I couldn't tell you the name. I bought it once for a separate build. It's cost me 10 pounds. And I also had a very cheap power supply from Amazon. It was about 30, 35 pounds. Perfect for this kind of a starter PC. And I came across this motherboard. It's a Z790. So Intel socket 1700, I think it is. But it's a Z790 board. So it has a few extra features that some of the other boards might not have. So when I actually brought it home, I realized this might just be the perfect combo for my home server needs because it has space for four Gen 4 NVMe drives. And normally what I'd have to do to get this working is something like this, which is a NVMe kind of PCI adapter card. So you've got two NVMe's on one side, you've got two NVMe's on the other side. One of the major problems with these is though that the slot that this goes into has to support something called PCI lane bifurcation. And essentially what this means is it has to understand that the kind of the, the one slot that goes in, it sees this as four individual kind of components or slots. But unfortunately, this motherboard doesn't support it. Now, I also want to include this card here, which it looks a little bit different, but it is a network card. And this is something called an SFP Plus card or SFP adapter here, and it's 10 gigabit. Now, I don't have anything yet that is 10 gigabit, but what this does is it gives me two more ports here on top of the already built into the motherboard one that has two and a half gig speeds. So this motherboard has some features that I would normally kind of buy adapter cards for, such as a two and a half gig port or another kind of NVMe slot or something like that. Now in terms of cooling, I am using this Thermal Right. Yes, it is a Thermal Right Assassin. These usually go on Amazon for about 10 pounds. They're an absolute bargain. This has RGB, so it really doesn't fit with a server build, but it was the cheapest one there is, and it is perfectly adequate for handling this CPU because it will never exceed the six. 65 watts. Now one thing that I want to pop in here is a graphics card and I'm kind of thinking of something a little bit more powerful because TrueNAS has recently come out with the version 2504 and what they allow you to do is a very very simple GPU pass through. I've done a complete video on TrueNAS so that will be linked down below. It's part of my kind of home lab series and this kind of expands on it a little bit more. For me this is fun and experimentation and this is a very dynamic build that I want to have something that has enough power with six cores and 12 threads, but also enough expandability in order to be able to kind of, as I'm learning, be able to expand this and kind of build on top of it. Now, I will be replacing this thing here that I have, which looks very, very different to obviously the um, PC that I'm building or the server that I'm building. And this, I've done a full video on this. This is probably the most boring mini PC ever, but it is absolutely incredible. It has all the features that I want. And I wanted to give you a bit of an overview if you've not seen that video, but by all means, please go ahead and watch it because if you're interested in starting out with your home lab, I highly recommend something like this. Now on the back is really where the magic happens and why I absolutely love this little mini PC and why it's been sitting there for such a long time. It has four two and a half gig ethernet ports. 
Have I made use of them? Absolutely not. I've used maybe one, maybe two, but I have not really kind of expanded on this as much as I wanted to. The rest of the IO is pretty straightforward. It's just got kind of your display ports and then on the front, it's got another couple of USBs and then a TF card, which is just micro SD card slot. But the bottom of this thing is really where the magic happens. And hopefully you can see that it has four NVMe slots here. Now, this is actually what's called a daughter board. So there's one NVMe slot underneath, but the way this is designed is it's a board that essentially slides in into the NVMe slot, and then you get four more NVMe slots. Now, one of the problems with this is that this has only got one lane each. So each of the NVMe's has one lane each because it splits a lane of four into four single lanes. Now, these are all one terabyte drives. This is a 120 gig NVMe, so I will be using all of these, or maybe I'll sell it, I don't know yet. But the one other problem I have with this is that this is a efficiency core CPU, an N305. It's got eight cores, I think it's six watt TDP, which is absolutely incredible for what this offers, and more than enough for most starters. But the one thing I obviously can't do with this is expand the GPU selection. And I want to play around with this a little bit more. And also a RAM is a relatively limited. This only supports, I think, up to 16 gig of RAM. Now, this thing here supports a lot more RAM, so I can go up to 32 gig. I think you can even do 48 or 96 gig or whatever DDR4 supports. I need to have a look into that. But 32 gig is kind of where I want to be because I am planning on loading this thing with a little bit more storage. Now, one thing I haven't showed you on my channel just as much is this thing here, which was kindly sent out to me by Lenovo, but I did a separate video. This isn't sponsored. I've just had this sitting on here, and it's a Lenovo ThinkSensor Neo Ultra, and it's got a Core i7-14700, and it's got a 4068 gig in here, and you can see nice and compact. But what I was using for now for testing is I was using this as kind of my main NAS, with the four NVMEs, and then I was using this for any kind of graphical testing. So if I wanted to do GPU pass-through or kind of needed a bit more speed for something or more cores, because this is a 14700, so you can Im imagine how much power this has. And I was always lacking something where I could kind of spin something up really quickly, because otherwise I'd have to have this running, but this has all the NVMEs, and then I'd have to spend a load more money to get NVMEs for this. But the problem with this is that this only supports a spare NVME, so even if I wanted to make this a main kind of PC for my video editing or whatever, I wouldn't be able to run this as a home lab. So I was always in this kind of no man's land. And the idea is to kind of combine both of them into this one beast here. And it will be sitting down underneath my desk and you'll just free up a little bit more space as well because I've only got a relatively small desk for the time being. So it's been a couple of days now and I've had time to actually play around with this little accidental server, shall we say, because as I said, this was meant to have been purchased for a sale, but um, I ended up enjoying the parts way too much and I thought, you know what, this is perfect, but, but so far I am absolutely loving it. But as I said, so far, really, really loving this. I've now managed to get the power under control as well. Now, I haven't got kilowatt, which I will probably get in the future for testing, but for the time being, I've managed to turn both of the fans off in the chassis and only have the CPU fan spinning because that was one of the things with my little, uh, well, silent and passively cooled N305 devices that was just sitting here and you wouldn't even know it was turned on. It is genuinely brilliant, but I think I'll be selling it because I just don't see the need now that, now that I have this because power draw is very similar and pricing wise, as well i can recoup some of the costs from selling this i can actually make a little bit of money on this believe it or not so now that i've shown you the hardware let me actually show you the software and what i'm running day to day at home because it's all well and good giving you a hardware overview without any context but i actually want to show you and hopefully inspire you that you can create an amazing home server for not a lot of money by just being a little bit savvy on facebook marketplace knowing what it is that you are buying and then obviously following my instructions and subscribing to this channel to kind of expand your home lab knowledge. So I'm mainly running TrueNAS because it's just my favorite operating system because it's kind of an all-in-one solution. A while ago, a couple of weeks, I think I did a video about TrueNAS and kind of how to set it all up and how to set up VMs specifically. And ever since the last update, that recent video is pretty much obsolete because uh, TrueNAS have come out with another update on how you can set up containers and virtual machines. Before it was called instances, now it actually has two separate sections called containers and virtual 
virtual machines. But that's not about this video. I just wanted to kind of give you a bit of an insight. Um, the, the, the context is still valid, but the menu options have just changed slightly. So obviously we can see we've got 16 gig here and an i5-12600 and temperatures on this are really low. And ever since I've actually shown you the setup on what the cooler I'm using, I actually ended up purchasing a knock to a cooler or a knock to a fan to just bring noise down even more. Now all I can hear is the coil wind off the PSU. But the main thing I wanted to show you is the kind of apps that I'm running at this moment in time. And if you've watched my recent video, you will know why Cloudflare is running. And that essentially allows me to have fully qualified domain names, so essentially just example.com, and I can access all the services that I'm running on my home network through Cloudflare. Go ahead and watch the video if you've not seen it, but honestly, Cloudflare is absolutely incredible, and I cannot believe it is free. I'm currently experimenting around with Image or Image, but it's essentially a self-hosted Google Photos competitor. So I'm kind of looking into that and it's got the apps, it's got all the mapping features, it's got everything like that. So I've just turned it off for the time being, but I am playing around with it and it is super, super cool so far. Another one I run is NetData and NetData is just a, a very in-depth monitoring tool. I also run Tailscale and Cloudflare, obviously, as I've just mentioned. Tailscale is just a brilliant VPN. They're not sponsoring this video, but honestly, if you feel like sponsoring me, please let me know because I genuinely, genuinely love your stuff. Now, obviously, if I wanted to install more apps, I can go into Discover Apps and then go ahead and download whatever it is that I want. And these are just glorified Docker containers, just essentially Docker containers made simple. But then the other thing I wanted to show you is that you can now have containers and also virtual machines. And I'm actually running a virtual machine, which I'm gonna get onto in a second. But before, in the previous version of TrueNAS, containers and virtual machines were under one umbrella called instances. Now they kind of separated it out. And it's essentially the same as Proxmox LXC containers. Now here I can create an LXC container. So if I wanted to run, I don't know, Arch, for example, I could just do that, select it, go ahead and configure everything. I'm not going to go through that. As I've said, I've got enough videos on this. But the main thing I wanted to show is I run something called OpenSense and OpenSense is its own router software. Now OpenSense is an incredibly powerful and massively in-depth operating system and you can do a lot more harm than good if you don't know what you're doing and I really don't know what I'm doing. I've got the basics configured, so I've got DNS configured, I've got DHCP configured and even now they've released a new version with a new setup for DHCP and I'm still working my way through it. But this is my main router operating system and this is why I have two network adapters in that I've got the 10 gig card and I've also got the two and a half gig card and that's actually my WAN where the internet comes in. So speaking of OpenSense this is what it looks like here and then it just gives me an overview of the features I really like kind of what I can see here. I can also see unbound DNS so I have block lists and this is essentially a little bit like AdGuard and PyHole. It's a, a brilliant ad blocker and it has the same block list Honestly, absolutely incredible piece of software. And it shows me everything that's been blocked and that's running. So you can see on the left-hand side, everything that's been blocked. On the right is kind of the top block domains. And it tells me what list it's come from. Love it, absolutely love it, couldn't be without it. And then I can obviously go into details and have a bit more of a specific look at things. And then traffic, this is a NetFlow diagram where I can see what the top talkers are. So these are obviously my WAN addresses here. And I can just see who is communicating with the internet. So if, I, if bandwidth has been eaten up, I can see that here and I can go, right, okay, well, this client needs to come off or why is this client using that much data? So it's a really, really insightful tool. The rest of it's pretty straightforward. I've got DHCP set up, as I said, with the new DNS mask, DNS and DHCP setup. I honestly don't know what I'm doing with this. DHCP used to be pretty straightforward. You set a, a subnet, you set your DHCP, range so where you want it to be usually i'm between 101 and 200 these are kind of where dhcp is given out and then the rest of it are used for various purposes but now this has just got completely revamped and i like it but i need to learn a lot and pick it up now some of you might be thinking hold on why are you virtualizing your router and i completely get that but to be honest with you i've got a very small home network there isn't much going on other than a couple of wi-fi access points and a couple of amazon echoes at home and then obviously my computer and my partner's computer so i have a backup solution in place it is connected under my desk so if anything happens, it takes over and it's ready to go basically. So it's as simple as that. 
So nothing really that's going to happen, but obviously everything is also backed up, both the config as well as the VMs are being backed up via snapshots. So I hope that you can see that with just a little bit of kind of knowledge around Facebook Marketplace and pricing and being able to haggle, you can build an absolutely brilliant server. The expandability on this is essentially endless. I'm currently looking at a graphics card because I want to play around with GPU pass-through on TrueNAS, but you don't have to run TrueNAS. You can run Proxmox. You can even run Windows Server if you wanted to, and then Hyper-V. So if you want me to do a video on that and kind of go a little bit more in depth on Windows Server, please let me know. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out the previous videos that I mentioned about setting up TrueNAS and also setting up Proxmox because I do have a complete home lab series kind of from start to finish, what PCs you need to look at and then going through Proxmox configurations, Docker containers, everything like that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.